What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in our previous videos, we went through and we set up pretty much all of our infrastructure for our database. We got our database set up, got our repository, we've got our services set up, we've got our controllers set up in terms of classes. But now what it boils down to is we need to go back and we need to put all, I call it the guts and all of the actual logic into our code that is going to make it so that these actual API endpoints aren't just stubs. Right now, they're essentially returning hard-coded fake data back, but by the time we get done here, we will have all of our actual code built out so that we will be able to retrieve Pokemon from our database. And we've since we've already got all of our infrastructure set up, we don't really have to even worry about our repository right now. So the repository, um, for the time being, repository is pretty much good to go. Most of the work that we're going to need to do is going to revolve around these services and the controllers. So first things first, let's just go into our uh, Pokemon service here. And since we have an interface, we actually need to return a uh, list of Pokemon um, for our get all. Let's, do, let's just go ahead and start with the get all. I think the get all is the first place to start. And what it's going to do is it's going to get all of the Pokemon. It's called a get Pokemons, but a get all is typically what it's referred to, um, I guess, kind of like as slang. You're getting all of the Pokemon. And the, what we're going to do is instead of actually returning just one Pokemon, key point here, make sure that you're returning a list. Because we're returning more than one Pokemon, we need to return a list. And that list that we're going to return is going to, or uh, that list of Pokemon DTOs, the method that we are going to actually return or call is going to be get all Pokemon. Then we need to go in here, go ahead and alt enter, bring in that. And if you click here, it will say one related problem because now that we have um, added that to our service, now we need to go into here and we need to actually implement this method. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to implement this method right here. Then what we're going to do is we are going to actually go into here and we're going to say list Pokemon. Um, we are going to return a list of Pokemon. And since we're actually getting all of this from the database, we're going to return Pokemon. You don't return Pokemon DTOs from the Pokemon repository because what is coming back is always going to be a Pokemon, not unless there's some kind of rare you know, situation that maybe you're familiar with that I'm not, but 99% of the time, just really realize that whenever you're getting something out of the repository, it's not going to be a Pokemon DTO. Now we're gonna go in here. We're going to turn this into a stream. So a stream is essentially just a data structure that can be manipulated by the stream API. And the stream API is just a fancy thing that we use in order to be able to um, just not use for loops. For loops, if we had to do all of this with for loops, it would be unsightly. So Java gives us this cool little thing called streams, so we don't have to actually do that. Um, also, in order to map this, we're going to have to actually map this too to return it back to the controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our own actual mappers. And if you want to, you can fast forward the video. This is going to be a lot of really repetitive code. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to code up a mapper. And if you don't know what a mapper is, essentially what's going, what happens, and I'll go ahead and uh, show you just kind of a vis visual representation of what I'm going to do here. What a mapper does is it takes one object and it turns it into the DTO. Or in some cases, it can actually be the other way around. A lot of times you can map to and from an object or to a DTO, and you can map from a DTO to an object. And a lot of times that we do that is for instances like this made up example. We're taking this Pokemon um, object and then we're making it smaller. Let's just say that we don't want the type. In this mapper that I'm going to be building, sometimes people call it hand rolling a mapper. <laughs> it's going to turn it into this uh, fictitious uh, Pokemon DTO, but that's what mappers do. If you ever hear somebody refer to a mapper or we need to map to a certain type, and that's just simply because um, a computer doesn't know 
what you want it to do. So if you want an object to change, or maybe you don't want to return a whole entire object, you have to create a mapper. And this is how you do it just by hand. And I, and I mentioned this in a previous video before, I always recommend to not use mapping utilities because you don't usually use mapping utilities in a real production environment. So a lot of times it just makes sense to just go down here and actually create your own. So if we're going to map it to a DTO, we are going to map it with the ID. So we're going to go into here. And if you notice a pattern, just notice the pattern here. Uh, this may look really confusing at first, but um, the pattern, once you get used to it, it's it's pretty easy to understand. So go down here, Pokemon DTO. We're going to get, uh, get name or uh, set name. So we're going to go down here. We're going to set the name. And then we're going to go into here. And we are going to get the name. So we go here, it's going to be get name. And what's happening is that you're essentially using the getters and the setters to do the mapping. So we're taking our Pokemon DTO and we're actually setting it with the new Pokemon ID. It's kind of a, if you just kind of logically think about it and just kind of stare at it for a second, it will make sense. It is a little confusing to understand what's going on, but uh, like I said, just kind of logically just stare at it for a little bit and eventually just like everything in programming, it just starts making sense. So we're gonna go in here and now we need to actually return the uh, Pokemon DTO. So we go down here and now we are going to return Pokemon DTO just like this. And I'm also going to do another one that's going to map it to an entity. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to go, and it's going to return a Pokemon. Notice the, notice the slight differences between these, and I'm going to map to entity, just like that. And we're going to pass in Pokemon DTO, Pokemon DTO. Then I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna do uh, just literally the opposite. So we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna new up a new Pokemon, just like that. Then we're gonna go Pokemon dot set name dot Pokemon dot, oh, uh, Pokemon. We want to put the Pokemon DTO in here. So we're gonna go Pokemon DTO dot get name. Let me see, just messed up. So uh, same thing, we're gonna go here and we're going to set the uh, type. We're gonna go Pokemon DTO dot get type. So here, go ahead, pass in the get type. And then we are going to return the Pokemon just like this. Okay, and that should be good to go. Now we can correctly uh, do our map without having to essentially, sh if you could shove all that code in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to map this to a DTO and we are going to pass in our Pokemon. And we've got a conflicting name here. So I'm just going to call this P and this will be P, so we'll pass in the P right there. And now what we need to do is we need to add on a collect. And essentially all that a collect does is it turns it into a list um, at the very end, just like that. Kind of confusing looking, but just remember, whenever you use stream, you're converting it into a stream. You use map, you're essentially doing a for each without, um, with your returning a new array. So, um, this might be important for you. A for loop, uh, the reason we use a map to uh, map because it returns a actual new, uh, it's going to return a new list. Map returns a new list. So that's a thing that I would probably remember to know the difference between a map and knowing the difference between a for each. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to actually go inside of our controller here then we can just quickly add our return Pokemon dot get service. So we're going to go here and we're going to return Pokemon service dot get all Pokemon just like that. And since it doesn't have a response to it, and this is just very simple, I'm just going to get rid of the response entity. Actually, let's just keep the response entity. I'm going to return it. So go into here, we'll say return new response entity and 
we will say Pokemon service .get all Pokemon, and we will return a HTTP status of OK, just like this. And we see here the list of Pokemon DTO, and we need to return a list of Pokemon DTO just like this. And IntelliJ is going crazy here. Okay, I don't I have no idea. I think I think I have some kind of weird setting on on my keyboard. So go here, and let's go ahead, boot it up, see what we got. Okay, looking good. So let's go ahead and get. And would you look at that? We got both our Pidgey and our Diglett back. We are looking good. We finally have our gets all figured out. And the next video, we are going to once again continue on here and continue uh, building out the processes or the API endpoints for this Pokemon API. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.